Welcome to another ICSB Insider webinar. My name is Sky Blanks. I'm Senior Project Manager at the International Council for Small Business. I'm joined here with Dr. Hill, um, who will be presenting on new venture skills as citizen skills. So I will give the floor to Dr. Hill to present. Thank you so much, Sky. And thank you for the invite. I'm really delighted to be here tonight. That is in the UK, 6 p.m. And I know it's lunchtime in Washington and wherever you are, nice to meet you. Um, I'm delighted to talk about a topic that's really very close to my heart and I'm really passionate about. And this is new venture skills as citizenship skills. What I will talk about is what it means to me and why I think we need to rethink the topic of how we link our passion of new venture creation, teaching, enterprise, entrepreneurial skills, how it could be addressed and what messages I have for policymakers, what in my view is needed, but mostly I would like to talk to you in the audience and find out your views, experiences, anything around that. Therefore, this is not an academic research paper, but rather an incentive for a discussion. And I hope to talk to you later. So what is my argument? Why I'm saying we need to make new venture skills a citizenship skill? There are three reasons I, I bring in my argument today. We have a right to work, but not to jobs or employment. And that is something that is very often um, overlooked and I'll talk about that in more detail. Secondly, we need to much more unlock the potential of change which we need right now in terms of climate change, sustainability, all of that, and we need to do this through new venture creation skills and therefore we need to make them citizenship skills. And thirdly, we need to develop competencies in self-responsibility much more strongly than we have done in the past, particularly in Europe, and the belief in the personal power we have. And all that can be done if we make new venture creation skills, citizenship skills. Who is in a hill? I'll tell you a bit more about myself. You can see my adaption of the Frank Sinatra song on the right hand side. I'm currently working at the Royal Agricultural University, which is a small university in England, in the countryside, with a focus on rural economy and educating young people. 50 ish percent are from farming backgrounds, some come for generations to our university, and others are from other parts of society, some international students, and some others. I've been working in the area of engaging with and for small businesses for the last 20 years, since I'm really in the UK, but also slightly before my background. I am German. I did, after my uh, A-levels, I did an apprenticeship in a manufacturing company for two years and then went to university, and then came for a postdoc to the UK and never looked back. My current research areas are rural enterprise, creative industries, and very much rooted in entrepreneurship as practice. I have a number of years experience as director, non-executive director for social enterprises here in the UK. And I really feel passionate about helping others. I work for a Prince's Trust as a mentor where I support young people in my leisure time who are from disadvantaged backgrounds, helping them start businesses. So what is this, what's in the word? I would like to clarify some of the concepts I'm using. What is new venture skills? What is citizenship skills? We are from different countries and, and regions. So what does it all mean? Um, some, of, some of us will agree on new venture skills involve particular attitudes and mindsets that equip an individual to start a business or develop a new service or product within an existing organization. We need knowledge for that about business, but we also need the effective engagement with what being in business is all about. And we need entrepreneurial competencies that are, uh, enable us to do so. In the UK, the Quality Assurance Agency, QAA, has come up with a framework which I personally also find 
helpful and that is what a lot of education in the UK is based on and that is that enterprise is part of employability. So in other words, um, employability is the overarching term and enterprise skills are subsumed within that. And in these, there's three areas that have been identified, which all enterprise educators will agree on. We need certain behaviors such as taking initiative. Self-reflection is hugely important. We need certain attributes such as being curious, open-minded, proactive, and we need certain competencies, the ability to solve problems, the ability to influence others, to lead, to implement change. And all that will lead to whatever form of employment, self-employability and employability that is working for someone else. We also differentiate between enterprise education and entrepreneurship education, the latter really being the one that enables um, someone to start an independent venture, whereas the wider enterprise education brings together all the uh, capacity and competencies for someone to develop a new service, a new product within an existing organization. I use the word entrepreneurial competencies and within the European level, there is there's a number of frameworks, but the most influential and the first one of many is the European Entrepreneurship Competence Framework. That is really important with its three areas of interaction, resources, ideas and opportunities, which influences entrepreneurship and enterprise education widely. And you can see the petals, the 15 competencies and descriptors here in this image. The main important aspect of that is that all these competencies listed there, I feel need to be added to citizenship skills for achieving the change we need and COP26 that has just finished has pointed out the urgency of social changes that need to happen. For those, and maybe we can discuss this later, the framework is increasingly established and influences curricular teaching within the UK, but also Europe, and it's a really helpful framework. So how does it all come together? Lastly, we need to identify, so what, is, what are citizenship skills? Uh, citizenship education, here's a definition, develops knowledge, skills, understanding young people need to play a full part in society as active and responsible citizens. Pupils learn about democracy, politics, parliament, all that, human rights, justice, media literacy, the law and the economy. However, the economy is a very abstract term. It doesn't include, at least in England, the education to being able to either start a new venture or develop a new service, thinking in cost, the risk-taking, the self-belief, all of that. And in my view, that needs to be thought through differently and linked much better together. Here are my three arguments I mentioned earlier with a bit more evidence. I said there is the right to work, but not the right to jobs or employment. Section 27B of the Human Rights Act clearly states everybody has the right to work, including the right to choose their occupation or profession freely. There are a number of other things, of course, in the Human Rights Act around fair and equal pay and other and what kind of work, but clearly the right to work is not a guarantee for employment. And in discussions I've come across, that is sometimes uh, misunderstood. Now, what does this mean in the context of citizenship skills? I find there is still a gap in the way citizens are educated to understand how there is a wish, a need or a responsibility to at least understand what starting a new venture is all about. It doesn't mean everybody has to start one. However, at least the competencies should be there to understand where to go if you wish to do so. And secondly, support others who do that, um, be that mentally or socially. And that's why the right to work 
and citizenship skills need to be linked differently. They need to be linked to the understanding and competencies around the ability to start a new venture. Here's some evidence why this is more needed now than ever. We've just had a pandemic. We've seen the numbers of jobs that have been cut. People have been made unemployed. Here, this graph gives just the redundancy rate for the UK recently. You see the peak when people were made redundant and the redundancy rate went up and it's now down to pre-pandemic level. But don't forget, those who were made redundant here in this period of time are not the same that now have a job again. These are most likely very different people and others have been made redundant. That means the quick changes in restructuring of industries, in industries disappearing, new ones appearing, is ongoing. And therefore having more people with the right skills to start a new venture is not, at least in the UK and in Europe, as implemented as it is possibly in other countries. This is just a quick overview of the OECD employment rate until January 21, a similar image that unemployment rate has gone down again, luckily. However, it is not the same people and therefore other people are now unemployed than were before. The second argument I'm saying is that we need to unlock the potential of change through new businesses that are started, that are sustainable, that are green, that are looking and considering the sustainable development goals, all the agreements about climate change from the very beginning. I come back to that uh, slide uh, in a moment to look at the statistics. What do I mean with that? Just as a reminder, really, uh, for some numbers from across the UK, startups employ 20% of the total workforce. They create nearly half of all new jobs. In the US, they account for 50% of aggregate productivity. Therefore, if we make all new startups, first of all, change makers and more socially oriented, more environmentally on, uh, implemented, we can achieve change more quickly. And therefore, the education needs to bring together citizenship education with educating young people for new venture skills or also older who start businesses or have become one of the bigger numbers, the 45 plus. Why is that needed? Because simply the large businesses don't do yet enough of what is really needed. A recent web screening of the EU Commission found that there is a lot of unsubstantiated claims on companies' website. This statistics, this was published earlier in the year, this year, 2021, that of the websites that were investigated of companies, 42%, that is over a third, nearly 50% of claims were, and I quote, exaggerated, false or deceptive and could potentially qualify as unfair commercial practices. Lack of evidence, distorted views of what a company is actually doing in greening, therefore greenwashing. The importance is, and that's why it is linked to citizenship skills, if more young people or older people indeed start businesses and the urgency and the need of doing it in green and sustainable ways is brought to their attention, we can implement social change a lot better. And therefore the unlocking the potential of change which we need can be done through new businesses as I showed with the power and the influence earlier, particularly if that is part of citizenship education to bring it closer to everybody really. Just looked at that. And lastly, I made the argument around, uh, sorry, the argument around develop competencies in enacting self-responsibility and belief in personal power. What does that mean? I use, this, I use the symbol of a male and a female lion here to indicate the personal power we all have. 
and self-efficacy is just one of the many concepts that realizes what self-belief can lead to if you then realize it in starting a new business for one application area. But in order to be able to do that, more help is needed, more support is needed, not just in education. And how does that link to citizenship education? Again, if we have new venture skills brought to everybody's attention, not only once in a short session, but on a, con on a continuous basis throughout education, then we can achieve the change we want to and create more responsible citizens that can take on the needed changes now, not in 10, 20, 50 years, but now. And therefore competence frameworks, as I showed them earlier, of which we have quite a few in the UK and in, in the EU, help on that journey. This might be all good, you might think, but how can this be done? I've mentioned already that it needs to start at an early stage at school levels and that is very patchy across EU in as much as uh, in, in the UK itself. We need new venture skills as a lifelong learning skill and we also need it as part of citizenship tests and I've recently done one. I know exactly what I'm talking about and what didn't wasn't mentioned at all. Um, the outcomes, therefore, I feel we need to aim for more for is encourage more of those who can be successful to start a new venture and improve the chances of succeeding. What does this mean in practice? Um, it was just pre-COVID that due to Brexit happening in the UK, me, a German citizen, thought to myself, hmm, I have no intention in living anywhere else but in the UK, so how do I work that one out? And I decided that it is only then timely and suitable that I take on British citizenship. And that's what I did. So I went through the normal processes everybody does as a migrant, um, did the training, read the book. You can see the book there. And this is the latest edition. Mine just looked a bit different and um, worked my way through all those handbooks. I learned about soap operas. Really? That could have been a question on soap opera. So I did have to learn what are the most popular soap operas. To be honest, I don't watch soaps. It's just not me. But anyway, I learned about it by heart. I could at some point recite those soaps, television series, um, that were mentioned in this handbook. Also learned about gold medal winners in various sports. I learned about, which is all aspect of culture, I learned about the development of the economy. And I learned about a number of things. What I didn't learn about is anything regarding starting a business. That struck me really at the time where I thought, of course, me being me, having started two service businesses in the UK, having done bits and pieces around that, worked for government, uh, Quango, providing business advice before I entered academia as a full-time staff. So I've been around doing things and I couldn't believe that there was nothing in my materials that was looking at starting a new venture. Is it different in other countries? I would love to know from you. Therefore, I have started to talk to officials also in the UK to say, why are you not including how to start a venture? It doesn't mean everybody has to start a business, but at least understanding where to go, how important it is for the economy and having enough insight to support others in getting on with that, should they wish to do so. I find is a really, really important aspect of what we should be able to talk about, point to others to, and therefore, I really mean that very literally. Citizenship tests, citizenship learning should include learning about new venture creation. I could say some topics, and you could indicate, could be less intense, soap operas being one of those, but that's just me. 
even if everything is remains the same and that topic is added from where I'm sitting, that would be a valuable addition to achieve the goal of the needed change. Another way of doing that is what is called also entrepreneurial education. I showed this graph earlier to give you the basics of how in the UK we look at enterprise education within employability education. Education that looks at both aspects, that is enterprise education and entrepreneurship education together as part of educational processes is called entrepreneurial education. And I think that is really important across the areas of education. At the school level and at all subject levels, not just in business, because some people don't do, learn anything about business. My hairdresser son, for example, has never learned anything about business when he left school with A-levels two years ago. He's now learned by doing, started a very successful business. It started off with IT, he's now in Bitcoins. He never understood how to do and start a business. He's learned it somehow and is very good at it now, but we found it very, very scary. I talked to him within his first six months. Why can't that happen? University education, there's a lot happening. I'm sure every country has similar things happening, but also outside of business and management. And lifelong learning is part of reskilling, learning new job skills, bringing also the needed mindset as an option, as increasing the repertoire of potential startups, the social entrepreneurial mindset to all our attention and what a green or environmentally friendly setup in a business would mean. And lastly, I want to point out some examples and solutions in higher education that are applicable to schools in as much as universities. This is just an overview of pop-up shops, something I have done and it is bringing together in a different way how running any of these pop-up shops can help students in all forms of education from primary school to universities think about more than just giving money, raising money to make donations, but rather creating a new service and thinking it through. What could that mean and what, what can be done with that? And the most recent pop-up shop happened in my neighborhood, which a seven-year-old girl who is the daughter of, daughter of our neighbors came up with. Without any training, she has never heard anything around business. She knocked at our door and, and offered us some sweets. And of course, we are happy to support her. But what, what it turned out was she was selling sweets that were left over from a Halloween party, street party we all had. And what she had done, we could re recognize the sweets we had brought to the party, is set up her little shop on the grass in front of her friend's house, covered it up with a little bit of foil, and then went to various people's houses to convince them to spend some money to make some po uh, pocket money. One of these many examples, but what really struck me with that is the enthusiasm, the excitement she brought to that based on making something happen again. And one of the things that I can see many of our, let's say students across various degrees do not have just this initiative. And it is exactly this initiative of making something do, which can be brought to the attention of more than we do at the moment. Here's another example of what a very capable gifted colleague of mine has been doing for the last 10 years. She has been running a social enterprise together with students producing wine. And of course, this is typical of a rural agricultural university <clears throat> that it is related to the widest since the rural economy. Um, the wine is grown on fields and students from across all disciplines can engage in running this business. So it is not that the marketing students do the marketing, as 
interestingly enough, the other way around, the agricultural students doing an agricultural degree engage in marketing and this design, these little rabbits or hares rather, have been designed by an agricultural student, no design background whatsoever, just playing around with some design software. Um, the business students get their hands dirty and go into the vineyard and engage in the actual uh, harvest of the grapes. And there's many other examples of how she, my colleague has realized that. She has, she has a number of weekly meetings to make this all happen. It is a social enterprise that is, the students understand what running a social enterprise feels like differently than it is than a profit for business, for example. And we have several of these. There's also wine brewery, but I don't want to extend too much on that. Where does this lead us? I have some recommendations for policy makers. Some came out of what we've already uh, discussed about mainstreaming enterprise education across all subjects and school types but integrating new venture creation, enterprise skills learning into citizenship learning for new migrants like myself and many others. And also to ensure that business support, because this is part of making this successful, is much more and better established as a profession, such as counseling and coaching. Because at the moment it is not yet. And there's lots of people to provide business support from various angles, not always with the best of results. And I've talked about that in a number of blogs in the past. Summary, so here's my argument again. New venture skills should be integrated in citizenship education for these three reasons. Increasingly, there will be a time for many of us where we have to think of other ways of earning a living than employment and being able to do that without getting into scare, being really scared, understanding what to do. So we've heard it before, it's much better than trying, trying to find it out when it happens, when the emotional stress is so much higher. We need more businesses than enabling the society and the way of business doing to change and that engage in doing business more sustainably from the very beginning and startups can exactly fulfill this role. And therefore citizenship education needs to integrate more of this kind of learning about startup to all the age groups and, and social groups in society I've identified. And lastly, part of that will be a greater self-responsibility and positive self-reliance and belief in empowerment, which is significant role outside of just running a business or being a citizen wider in society. And that's really all I wanted to say. There will be some, most likely some other talks which were discussed with the CEO of the ICSBS about what a sustainable business startup might look like and what relational thinking is all about in entrepreneurship and the effect. And that's the end of my talk. I'll stop sharing. Thank you. Uh, very interesting. I, uh, I want to give the floor to the participants. If you guys have any questions, please use the Q&A function or the chat. Um, but I have a question um, that kind of sparked in my head when you were discussing the, um, the pop-ups. And it reminded me of a program that happened uh, that we do at George Washington University and across the United States called uh, Lemonade Day. And so GW's business school partners with DC um, youth to um, create lemonade stands throughout the city. And they learn about financial literacy um, and cultivate, you know, uh, a business plan for a lemonade stand. And so is there any similar models that you employ or is that the pop-up system kind of similar to uh, what we do here? Um, what I'm doing for the pop-ups is really a lot of experiential learning. So I give as little instructions as possible while it is either 
students who study business or also students who don't study business at all and give them a framework that is I say okay four weeks six weeks in advance you can have a table you can have chairs equipment that's it in groups I've learned self-organized groups are much better organize yourself to start with find a charity decide on a charity that has to be UK based who to give the money to for, but you it's not just about fundraising running around with a with a box but it's really about coming up with a service selling it but that's where the money goes and that's the first time of thinking more responsibly what the money is needed for so in that sense it is not models i give them but rather enable them to have some experiences as typical on uh, experiential learning is all about and that is if they had had a module beforehand i then they will have heard of business models they will have heard of the lean canvas and various other bits and pieces but interestingly enough and that's my experience over four years they do not actually when it comes to this pop of activity refer to a business model mm -hmm. so they and that's where where then the facilitator needs to come in us as lecturers to say well actually can you remember we, we did bits and pieces can you apply them here um, and that's really part of the models I use. Lean Canvas is one of them. I have developed a business model, uh, which, which I have, which is somewhere um, different from the, from the canvases that, that are around. Does this answer Great. your question? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, so it's more geared towards the learning, like you said, um, experimental learning um, with the students. Um, Another question that came to mind um, when you were talking about citizenship education and rethinking how to implement business skills and how, you know, you know, our experience in the United States is, you know, there's a lot of small businesses that ran by immigrants and like you said, they aren't taught the formal business practices. Um, and I think a big barrier to that is access to capital. Um, and so how have in your studies or cases that you worked with um, have been able to help educate or create a system where immigrants will have access to capital or learn how to navigate that system? Um, there are plenty of organizations in the UK that are run by various uh, groups of ethnic minorities who organize themselves as one area, as, as, in, as in the US as well. Uh, such as the Chinese Business Association, such as the Asian Chamber of Commerce. So there's quite a few of those. But also, naturally, our business support services in the UK are open to everybody. And particularly those who have a right to work can engage with those and access them. Access to finance for me is not the biggest problem. Um, having a, start cap a starting capital is important. But access to finance is not the most important one, and is you want to go down a really big, let's say, science-related one. But even then, I had two of my former students starting that kind of business from various countries in Asia, and they were able to raise money through funders working with an incubator. So, um, if you have the idea and the passion, you will find them. You will find the support, even if you do not know anyone, in either accessing through the university or the traditional business support services. Because then, if so, if you convince others from your idea that it's helpful and could work, you will find the investment or find this, uh, the loans that are needed to make an idea work. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the audience? Let me check Facebook. See no questions. I want to thank you for your time, Dr. Hill, and sharing um, this this discussion and an interesting topic that I think many kind of don't think about. Um, you know, certainly I it's the first time thinking about citizenship education and how that process works and and how you can really implement business skills. So thank you for, for uh, bringing this up and sharing your time with us. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, it was my pleasure. And uh, see you soon. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Have a good day. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.